So that's the seven step client value optimizer system. And we're going to apply this to a website that I, is re relatively new for me called Jazz Mental. It's a membership and course lesson site for advanced piano players. If you can see that description written here, my goal for this particular presentation is to use this site, which is built on WordPress, to create that seven step client value optimizer system, which is our sales funnel. And that's how we're going to do it. So the first thing we need to do is pop into the back end and we are going to add a new page. And I did some research prior to this, and you might want to do your own research. So for example, you can do YouTube research using TubeBuddy. You can do Google research using Google Ads. Um, or you can use Market Samurai. And you can find specific keyword phrases. And the keyword phrase that I'm going to use for this one is something that's fairly popular. And it's called Carol of the Bells Sheet Music. And it's for piano. And that's the keyword phrase that I did some research on. And that's the keyword phrase that we're going to be using on every single asset that we put on this page. It's very important to understand that process because search is an important part of the equation. Free traffic is a wonderful thing. So as you can see, we're using WordPress right now, but I do have Elementor installed. Most of what I can do with the system is with the free Elementor, so that it won't cost you anything to get going with this. I love the Elementor editor. It works with, other, with many themes. It also works in conjunction with other editors as well, like Gutenberg or even Aveda. So you can put them on top of each other. In this particular case, we're going to be using uh, Elementor to edit. So let's get going and hit the Edit button for Elementor. And let's start building our landing page. So this is the lead magnet that I talked about in the beginning. From time to time, I may be taking my photo out of here or making it a little bit smaller in this case so that we can kind of see a little more of the screen. And we have a header and we have a footer in here. What we're going to do right now is we're going to start off by putting an image in. And I love to put a good image in there, one that's professional, one that makes it look like we know what we're doing and that we have some professionalism in our system. And so let's just go and grab uh, an image and put it in there just like that. And I'm actually going to create a background so we can put a button over top. But I want to get the image in there first just to kind of see what it looks like. At this point, I'm going to pop over to my one of my favorite tools, which I think many of you uh, may have heard of before. And this one is called Bannersnack. And I love Bannersnack. It's a low cost tool. I use Photoshop a lot, but for something like this, I like to start off with pre-made templates, which make it easy for us to create uh, great images. And we're going to go into the Jazz Mental folder and there, and we're going to add a new one. And we're going to call this the same thing as we called the other one, which is Carol of the Bells. It's important to re rename, uh, to name these things properly. Oh, I made a folder. I didn't mean to do that, but that's fine. I can go in there and I'm not going to create a new folder, but I am going to create a new single design. And the design is going to act also as the featured image for the page. So the best featured image sizes that I've found that work well across all systems is what we call the Facebook ad feature, uh, featured image size, 1200 by 628. And you can see in here that I've already got these templates that, that they've been so kind to put in there. And all we need to do is just kind of scroll down and find one that works for us. And it's a great little starting point. So because it is a, a Christmas sheet music, we're going to start here. And then all I need to do is do some copywriting, free download. Oops. 
And as I go through and edit these things, again, if you have any questions about the process, you can certainly uh, let me know in the chat area. Is everyone still muted? Can somebody let me know that your listening experience is good? <laughs> that would be great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here, Carol of the Bells sheet music. And then what I like to do is I like to put a value on these things. So this thing is actually available in the store for $9.97. So they can see the value of it right in the thing itself. And so let me sort things out a little bit here. And it, if you can see, I'm, I, as I'm moving things around, you can see little lines pop up. That kind of helps us align things properly, which is cool. Aligns them to the center of the page. And all I'm going to do now is name the video. And download it. I'm going to use medium quality at 80%. And then once I've downloaded the video, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to place the video in the system. And there you go. Uh, it's not the video, sorry. I'm going to place the image in there. Now, I know that it's 628, but what I want to do is I actually want to put a button on top of this so that when people come immediately to the page, they're clicking something and getting engaged. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add the button on top of this image. So in order to do that, I actually need to, in the top left-hand corner, click these little buttons here. And instead of the image being there, I'm going to make it as a background. OK, and then all I need to do here is remove this image on top. And then because there's no spacing or anything, it's going to go small. So what I need to do is I need to add some padding at the top and at the bottom to start with. Let's add 250 to the top and say 200 to the bottom. And let's throw something in there like a button. And you'll immediately see that the padding takes effect when there's something inside. And let's go and edit that button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link on to scroll to the next area. So we don't want people to leave the page. We want them to scroll down. It's just they can scroll automatically with their phones or with their fingers or their mouses or whatever. But I like to put buttons there to kind of encourage people to do something. And so let's make that a nice, beautiful red button. So I'm going to put a background color on there. And then on the hover, I'm going to I'm going to alternate the image so that the text color is red and the background color is white. So if I hover over it, you can see it does this kind of thing. And then let's do a couple of things. Let's center it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go with large. Actually, medium probably would work here. Medium. Also, in the styling area, I want to take out the rounded borders because that's kind of like 1974. So let's go border radius 0. And then let's finagle this thing so that it gets down to the bottom here underneath Carol of the Bell sheet music. So what we need to do is a little bit of you know, guesswork here. Let's add, say, 400 to the top and then 425. Gets it down to kind of where you want it to be. And then you've got this doubled up area at the bottom, so we need to delete that at the bottom. Let's go back to, say, 150 or 160. Yeah, 150 was better. Okay, and there we go. So this click now button 
uh, gets people to scroll, but there's a better way to put than click here. Click here is kind of like the worst call to action ever. So let's change the, the wording on that. And what we're gonna do is, I love this one for, for lead magnets. And we're gonna say free instant access. Kind of lets people know right away that they can get what they want immediately. And thanks uh, for people who are uh, answering questions in the chat area. Lucian says, yes, I'm in WordPress and I'm using the Elementor editor. For those of you that are not familiar with Elementor, it's a great editor. You don't need to know any code whatsoever. It's a very helpful system. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a container and put an anchor in there. So when we scroll, it scrolls to the menu anchor. So let's just throw that in there. And the name was, I forgot the name already, scroll, thank you. And just type in the word scroll. And then now when people click that button, it'll scroll to that anchor. They won't see this, it's in the background and it's, it's hidden from view. Next thing we wanna do, and this is one of the things I like to do at this time of year, people typically uh, respond very well from a hypnotic standpoint to offers that end at a certain time, what we call limitations or FOMO or the fear of missing out. So I like to put countdown timers. And in this particular case, I'm going to use what's called an evergreen countdown timer to give them half an hour. So let's just look for that in this area and throw in the countdown timer. Oh, we need to make a new container. And let's throw in the countdown timer here. And you can see over on the left-hand side, these are the settings for the countdown timer. And we're gonna use evergreen timer. And we're gonna set our countdown at 30 minutes. So we're gonna give people 30 minutes. Now, the way this works is when that timer runs out, you can do a few things. So actions after expire, you can actually redirect them to a page so that the offer is no longer available. So the redirect URL, let's just send them to the homepage so the offer is no longer available. You wanna make sure that if you're advertising that you, um, Make sure that if it's an actual date timer, that you stop advertising on the day that the thing ends. Otherwise, you're buying ads for something that no longer exists. So in this particular case, it's based on IP address. So if somebody comes here, they wait out the 30 minutes and they try to come back to this page, they won't be able to get here. They'll only be able to get to the home page. So that just lets them and trains them to know that the next time they come to this page, free offer that they only have X amount of time to get that. So the question is, can you use <coughs> Elementor with Aveda? Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, the answer is you can use them in conjunction with each other. They don't work in tandem. So you either use one builder or the other, but yes, you can. Just be careful because there is sometimes some conflicts with the themes. But yeah, I have sites that run both Aveda and Elementor. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Moving forward. Now we need a little bit of copy because all they've seen so far is the free download, the value, the free instant access button and the countdown timer. And now we need to throw in some actual content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a container and let's write some copy. I have some copy already created for this that I did. Carol, download Carol of the Bells in PDF format, professionally arranged for piano by Paul Toby, making it easy for you to learn and share with family and friends. So again, some benefits. Easy to learn, share with family and friends. This arrangement is considered intermediate to expert level. You might want to highlight certain things if you can. It is a good length at six pages and will certainly challenge you this Christmas. By the way, I've done things like this in the past with other pieces of sheet music. This is the first time I'm doing it with Carol of the Bells. It's extremely popular and works very well. So if you're, if you're seeking ideas, obviously for your own lead magnets, you have to think about what people actually want. And in this particular case, if you, if you do a search on the internet and you try to find 
your lead magnet that somebody else is selling that will kind of give you an idea of what the value is and whether people would be willing to pay for it. If you give it for free, I've seen conversion rates on pages like this uh, as high as 60%. That means 60% of the people that actually visit this page will give us their email address. So we don't want to end there. We want to make it uh, so that um, people can not only get that, but we want to also, if you really want to push them over the edge, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit more than that. So let's add a new thing here, and we're going to paste in a title, what I call the bonus instructional video. So what is a bonus instructional video? And I also have copy prepared, prepared for that as well. And let's throw that in. Download today and you'll also get a complete 30 minute instructional video. Bold that if we can. By Paul Toby on how to approach the arrangement, learn the proper fingerings, scales, and solo strategies that you need to sound great. A $29 value free. So now they're getting the sheet music and they're getting the video, which is kind of a no brainer for most people. And to help that out, I would have gone back to Banner Snack and created another image to kind of represent the bonus video. And we're going to call that Carol LaBelle Sheet Music for Piano. Make it look like a video. You actually can't play it. It's just a superimposed play button. Hope you're getting some good ideas from this thing. And then all we need now uh, is an opt-in form, which is really where the whole system starts to really rock. Now, sometimes people like to put testimonials on pages like this. You can do that. Any kind of proof that you have, you can do that. In this particular case, I don't think it's that hard for people to tell the value. And because all they're doing is giving up an email address, I don't need a bunch of testimonials telling people that it's good sheet music. I could probably dig them out and put them in, but in this particular case, I'm going to run without it. If you want to put testimonials and you want to put some proof in your copywriting, then you can go ahead and do that. I'm not, and that's maybe people are thinking, well, where's the testimonials? Usually you see those things like that. In my experience, this, this kind of page and this kind of type of product doesn't really need one, so I'm going to leave it out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the opt-in form. Now, for those of you that have the free Elementor, you wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, you can create an opt-in form with the software that we're going to use, which is Groundhog, which is a product built for WordPress. But the form styling is a little bit different. It's a little harder to get inline forms and things. And what I want to do is I want them to sign up on this page and I want them to stay on this page. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a, a background color just to start, just to change up the, the look and feel of it. So on the whole container, under style, you'll see a background color. And I'm going to make it this sort of nice, nicey, nicey purple thing. And then I'm going to add some padding to this thing before I start adding content. So I'm going to put 50 at the top, 50 at the bottom. And then I'm going to start throwing in my content. And from a hypnotic standpoint, I always think about what's the best copy that we can put here. So I'm going to start with download now. It's free. I'm not quite sure why my padding isn't working. Oh, it's because I put margin in instead of padding. There we go. So download now. It's free. <laughs> and then put in a title. Carol LaBelle Sheet Music Instructional Video. By the way, I'm just pasting it in from another document. Uh, but what you can do is there's lots of widgets 
in the Elementor area for doing this. So I could have just pulled in a heading and then typed in Carol of the Bell sheet music and then changed the styling. But I think that's fairly obvious. So that's why I'm just kind of doing it quickly because I don't want to waste a lot of your valuable time in the minutia of styling. And the next thing you want to do, which I really love to do on landing pages, is to show them what's going to happen. Step one, fill out the form. Step two, confirm your email address. Step three, receive download links. I love that sort of three-step process to let people know what's about to happen. Because a lot of people are like, they're going to fill out the form and they're going to say, where's my sheet music? It doesn't take them automatically to a download page. Can anybody tell me why you wouldn't want to do that? why you shouldn't give them the download links right away. If you think about it, people can pretty much put in any email address and then try to get the sheet music and they would get it on the, on the, on the next page and you don't want that. You want actual real addresses. So that's why you, you do this process. Confirm their email address and then you get your download links. We don't want to send download links to anybody that doesn't give us a valid email address. And we're going to make sure that that's part of our sales funnel in WordPress. So then what we want to do next is you want to go over to Elementor and you want to add a web form. Now you can see if you have the Groundhog extension for web forms, you can pull that in. But in this case, I'm just going to use the straight Elementor web form here. And I'm going to style it a little bit differently than this because I don't really like this style. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take out the label and I'm going to put full name as the placeholder. So we want to collect full name. And then the column width, I'm going to set that to 33%. So we're going to put it side by side. Then obviously we need an email address. We just don't need the label. And let's put that to 33%. And then we don't need a message, so let's delete that. And then the send button, we're not going to call send. We're also going to name this free instant access. And then we're going to change that as well to 33%. And there you have it side by side. I'm going to make that medium so it goes full height. Let's style the button a little bit because I do not like rounded corners. I'm not exactly sure why that's the default in Elementor, but it is. So full name, email, free instant access. If you actually wanted to make that smaller, all you have to do is go over to the advanced area for that particular element and put in padding on the sides. So if you could say right is 100, left is 100, it'll kind of make it smaller as you do that. So let's do another 150, 150, just like that. Okay. I also want to put in some share buttons so that people who get to this page can share. The, and we'll just paste those in. You'll find that also in the Elementor elements area. Okay, so now all we need to do is we need to connect this form to the funnel, which is really the whole goal of the WordPress sales funnel system is you want to follow up, follow up, follow up. 